Karthik Ramakrishnan is a professor of public policy and political science at the University of California. In this conversation with Lalit K. Jha, Mr. Ramakrishnan talks about the growing influence of Indian Americans in the US politics. This is a New India Abroad video. Can you tell me briefly about uh, Indian American population in the, in the US and how uh, their voting pattern or the politics I've involved in, in recent years? It's a very fast growing population. And, uh, you know, we've had different waves of Indian immigrants coming to the US, right? So starting the early 1900s, with a lot of uh, Indian Americans and especially six Punjabis come, settling in the West Coast and California in particular. But then you didn't have much of uh, uh, additional immigration until uh, until the 1970s, right? But then really started taking off after 2000. You know, there's all the immigration related to the Y2K uh, issue and then it just continued since then. Um, so Indian Americans are there are over 4 million Indian Americans in the population. It's a smaller number that are eligible to vote, right? Who are adult citizens, U.S. citizens. But it's a group that's been fast growing um, and have tend to have the highest voting rates among Asian immigrants. Um, my research, I've done this for a long time. Part, part of the reason is because Indians come from a pretty vibrant democracy. So they've had experience in democracy before. High English proficiency as well, so that helps. Um, but uh, also more and more getting engaged in politics. So when, when you have candidates running for office, they're more likely to get donors who support them. So in terms of Indian American engagement in politics, part of it is due to their voting, part of it is due to their increasing campaign contributions, and then part of it is due to more and more people running for office. The number that are eligible to vote, it's a, it's a little over 40% of them. So you have 1.8, 1.9 million. So just about, just about, just shy of 2 million that are mm -hmm. eligible to vote. Um, okay. And in terms of their voting rate, we have a report. If you go to our website and you mm -hmm. go to apidata.com slash reports, you'll see our national report, which will have some of this. Uh, in terms of the voting rate in 2020, Indian Americans among adult citizens, 71% of them. 71% went out and voted? Yeah. Wow. That's quite a big number. Uh, it's a big number compared to Asian Americans hmm. overall was 60%. So, you know, for a group that's more recently arrived, it's actually quite remarkable, the proportion of them that ended up voting in uh, 2020. One question I had because you know uh, the Democrats are trying uh, have decided to change the primary order now going to South Carolina, Georgia, right? And those are the states uh, in which when they are the swing states, they the Indian Americans play a very crucial role in the in the decisive uh, who wins. Uh, would they have? Uh, do you think in this way the Indian Americans would have a much larger say in the election, presidential election process? It's uh, Joe Biden is going to run for office, so it's not going to be a competitive primary, right? Right. right um, so yeah. I think it'll be important to see what happens in 2028. But if you look at the presidential races, yeah. So in recent years, you know, you've had states like Georgia, states like North Carolina, states like Texas. And these are states where Indians are fairly numerically strong. If whenever it is a competitive based Indian Americans would have an important play in the primaries, it's like it. Yeah, almost by definition, because if the races are small, then, you know, it makes sense. Yeah, the thing is also, I would say that, uh, yeah, another couple of important things. Indian Americans, even though you might have some prominent Republicans like Nikki Haley, you know, she's going to be announcing uh, that she's going to run for president. Uh, most Indian Americans are Democrats. If you look at their voting patterns, if you look at their donation patterns, if you look at who runs for office and who wins office, they tend to be among the strongest Democrats among Asian populations. Uh, based on your research and your studies, what are the reasons for this? Why they tend to be more Democrats? Yeah, I mean, it's um, they've been consistently for a while. Uh, some of the reasons include um, you know, the parties are shifting now, right? So people who have higher education, it used to be they were more likely to be Republican. Now they're more likely to be Democrat. So that's part of it. 
Um, it's also experiences with discrimination. Indians are more likely to experience discrimination, and this, especially after the 9-11 period, saw that the Democratic Party was much more uh, friendly and credible uh, when it comes to addressing discrimination than the Republican Party. And then in the Republican Party, you've had a strong strain of um, anti-immigrant sentiment and also um, you know Christian Christian nationalism within within the Republican Party. So that has turned off a lot of Indian Americans uh, to the Republican Party. What are the further projections of the Indian Americans in the US? Do you have any study done? How do you see their growth? You know, the, the, there's been a tremendous increase uh, in terms of the number of candidates running for office, the number of donors, the number of voters. And then you have organizations, right? Like I am Indian American Impact that are fundraising to get even more people running for office. So. I think it's still on a pretty strong upward trajectory in terms of what the future of Indian American political uh, involvement looks like. In terms of influence, uh, Indian Americans, uh, what is your thought on that? What kind of influence they have on the political system in this country? Yeah, I mean, it's they have, first of all, there's a lot of Indian Americans that are serving right in the Biden administration and in Congress, either as electeds or in staff. So there's influence there, but the influence is more like they are serving the country, right? Um, you also see influence in terms of, um, you know, the business relationship with India. There, I think this was true both under the Trump administration as well as the Obama and Biden administration, right? Pushing for uh, greater business ties and opportunities uh, between these two countries. I think the big question in terms of the future of Indian Americans will, will depend on the future of the India-US relationship as well. Um, and there I think it's looking more promising than what's happening with, with the US-China relationship. That's causing a lot of tensions within the Chinese American community because of the concerns that all of the anti-China rivalry and rhetoric will will hurt the Chinese American population here who have nothing to do with China. India doesn't have that problem and Indian Americans don't have that same problem. But why do you think uh, we're linking India US relationship with the Indian Americans? I'm just thinking in terms of the long term future, right? Because what's happening right now is because of the rivalry with China, there are there are allegations of discrimination against Chinese what? Americans by the federal government because of allegations of espionage and all of that, right? Um, and also the sense that because China is being um, demonized in the press and also by certain government officials, that 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 causes more discrimination against Chinese Americans. And also after the pandemic, right, when Donald Trump was talking about the China flu and the China virus. There's been a lot of violence against Chinese Americans in this country because of that. I'm just saying for Indian Americans, you don't see that same limitation, right? So um, I think normally for immigrant groups, they always have to be careful. I mean, this happened to Indian Americans after 9-11. They had nothing to do with 9-11, but they got attacked, right? Um, and that's still, you know, for six, they still are getting attacked, getting killed. So I think in general, the, the if you look at the future of discrimination against Indians, I, I don't think it's as bad now, and I don't think it'll be as bad in the next decade as it was for Chinese Americans. Um, but for certain communities, I think, you know, for Sikh communities, I think a lot of struggle still, for Dalit communities still experiencing a lot of discrimination. So it'll, you know, we'll see. Um, but overall, it's looking quite strong in terms of the future of Indian Americans in politics. Uh, one last question. Uh, how do you compare Indian Americans with other ethnic groups this time? So if you look at, um, among Asian groups, Indian Americans are the most Democrat, very highly involved. So they're similar to Japanese Americans, even though Japanese Americans have been around for a lot longer, right? Um, I would also make a comparison to uh, Jewish Americans, right? So on average, you know, even though there's variation, high education, high income, um, high wealth, and you think, oh, these might be Republican voters. Why aren't they Republican voters? Well, 
they experience discrimination. They're also, Indian Americans have a lot of religious diversity. Most of them are not Christian. So to be a non-Christian group in a country where there's a lot of pressure, right, uh, in terms of um, Christi Christianity and politics and Christian nationalism, that keeps them very secure in the democratic camp. Yeah. Similar, to, similar to Jewish Americans, right? You will have a few prominent Jewish Americans that are major Republican donors, similar with Indian Americans, but the vast majority of Jewish Americans, they vote Democrat, they contribute to Democrats, and when they run for office, they're Democrats.